gonna get to look at this Cancept Excipiter. Now, I do have a couple problems with this knife. So this is probably not a knife I would buy, but I can appreciate a lot of the things about it. But before we go any further, there is a spec sheet over here for you guys to look at. Um, I'm not gonna read off a bunch of specs to you. You guys seem to like it better that way. So on a spec sheet, you saw it, but we are gonna get a couple of in-person specs. We're gonna get the weight. We're gonna get the behind the edge thickness, but let's take a look at that. I'm gonna come back to it and talk about it again. This micarta reminds me of old, old issue OD green military gear that has just been worn to nothing, and it gives it a really good look. I had a I had a web belt in boot camp that my uh, my canteen was on that was the same color canvas, and it looked just like this. So it brings back some memories. All right, guys, let's go ahead and we'll get the calipers out. We're going to look at some behind the, uh, we're going to look at some blade stock thickness, behind the edge thickness, and then we'll bring the scale out and we'll get some weight. All right, I just, just verified these cheap bastards on a feeler gauge. It came out good. So you're looking at probably 0.14 is what they've got it listed on the website at probably, because this is 0.13 nine ish um so not real super blade thick blade stock let's look at the behind the edge thickness i'm curious this cut well but it didn't cut great so i'm going to say this is probably before i even do it i'm going to say this is probably coming up close on the point zero three range right behind the edge oh boy boy howdy now i'm not i'm not going to try and say that i um am a genius or anything, but that's what it kind of felt like. And I did not pre-measure this. So I just was guessing that it was going to come in around 0 0.03, which is on the edge of that Goldilocks zone. So it's not super thin behind the edge, but it's also not terribly thick. So a little bit more robust edge. So there is your blade stock thickness and, uh, and behind the edge thickness out of the way. Let's go ahead and get the scale and we'll take a look at the weight on this. All right, and then magically our Hamilton Beach Nick, Nick Shabazz certified scale pops in. Let's take a look at the weight on this and we'll do it in ounces first as always. In ounces, four and three eighths ounces. It's not super heavy. Um, what's in my pocket? Let's compare that to my Norseman. Um, five ounces on my Norseman. So it, that gives you a little bit of comparison weight wise. Let's look at that in grams for those of you that put mayonnaise on your French fries or poutine and don't use freedom units. It is 126 grams. So there you go on your weight. Not a heavy knife. It's a fairly large knife and it's still not real heavy. Let's get that again. 126 grams. All right, let's get this scale out of the way. Guys, I hate to interrupt the video because I know we're having fun, but I do have to do the YouTuber thing and remind you that this channel is self-sponsored with all the affiliate links and stuff you see down below. Anything from knives, tools, EDC gear, and uh, Blade HQ, anything, all the Amazon links, they all support the channel it doesn't cost you anything at checkout so i'll talk about that at the end of the video now let's go back to the knives and let's get into the knife itself so this is a very very good looking knife i love I, I said it in the very beginning this inlay just makes it for me it looks like an old uh tarp that we would use to cover firewood it's it gives, it's got a very, very rustic feel to it. Um, it is machined incredibly well, as I would expect from Cansep. You got a nice backspacer with a lanyard hole and really good, clean, polished hardware. I don't necessarily have to have the big pop um, of color like you get from some of the CGRB with the red. I do like that a lot, but sometimes just a good, clean, machining with a, with a pivot collar even if it's the same color it gets gives you some facets i'm i'm a fan um closed it's not a really intrusive knife in pocket um and then open you have this big beautiful drop point blade with the swedge that's done almost perfectly there i if it is not a hundred percent even i couldn't tell you i would have to measure it with the calipers to tell you if the termination points are off at all from side to side um the blade grind on it is done really well like we saw it comes down to a robust edge it's not super thick behind the edge it's also not you know super thin 0 0.03 is not a super heavy thick edge um it's just a little thicker than a lot of the knives that i'm carrying these days um 
So this thing came from Jared with a pretty aggressive edge. I must that's probably 600, maybe 800 grit. And it cuts really well. S35 VN at about six or 800 grit is really good. Cancept seems to be doing a really good heat treat on their stuff. Front flipper only, and the action on it is just shy of drop shut. Uh, I would imagine if I took this part, cleaned it up maybe, uh, gave it a little bit more time to break in, that it would be drop shut, but the action is not bad at all. The way that this thing cuts is great. Um, it did not get dull. It cut really well. You've got some nice jimping, so cutting with it is really comfortable. Um, there's no hot spots to speak of. There really are not any hot spots to speak of. Even with that big, tallish pocket clip, it's tapered down nice at the end. Uh, that does a lot for a knife. Um, these deep carry pocket clips that I see, my big con complaint that I keep saying about these and people don't understand is that it's thicker back here than it is at the front. If you were to find a way to make a deeper carry pocket clip where it tapers down more at the back, this is way more comfortable than something that's tall at the back and skinny at the front. It's exactly opposite of what you want this area can be a little taller is this is lower because you've got more material there that you're up against so really good job on a pocket clip to a point we'll talk about that in a minute um nice ample finger choil there access to the lock bar is just great it's just done almost perfectly it's not too tall that it gives you like that it makes it look weird if you look at it from the front, you can barely tell it's been done because they, they chamfered that out and, and filleted that out. So even though it's a little taller, it still looks good because that line kind of marries up. And then when you get on it, no problems disengaging the lock. Lockup is really good. There is no blade play at all. No lock rock, no blade play. Big ceramic detent ball, ceramic bearings. And so that gives you some really, really good action. Now... Let's talk about a couple things I don't like. Oh yeah, I meant to. I meant to keep. There's other stuff. So this is. These are hollowed out cutouts on this that come down, and so your micarta goes all the way through the knife. So there is no titanium showing here. No titanium showing here. It's been chamfered. It's been cut out and milled out. It gives you that flow where you have a good contrast. I do like that. Um, I think that this the the. I think visually this knife would have suffered if they had made this like a f like if they had had titanium around to hold to make it look like it was holding it place. I like that complete flow through of that. It is really attractive. And then, like I said, just overall, once it's open, the lack of a flipper tab gives it a really, really nice, clean line. So it is attractive. Like I said, the jimping is there, but it's. Like it's kind of it's kind of covered. You do have some jimping. If you're wearing some gloves, that might be better. But they could have done away with the jimping, but you know, the fact is that the jimping, the jimping's not there for that. The jimping is there because that's your front flipper tab. And it gives that is a cool look on that flipper tab, that front flipper. So there you go. The the good things about the knife. Now there are a couple bad now let's things. talk about some of the bad things about the knife. So there's only a couple really bad things. It's a front flipper only. That's my big problem with this. It's a front flipper only. I don't like front flippers. When I flip a front flipper, as opposed to a back flipper, where I can have my hand anywhere where, well, let's see here. Let's pull my Norseman back up. I can have my fingers anywhere I want. I do not have to adjust the, the, the way I'm holding that knife. See how my fingers never moved? Now, I have to move my fingers back and off of the lock bar pretty much. And then I'm basically just on, I got like, I got like two fingers and a, a little bit of another one on that knife. So I have changed my position to where, it, for me, it just feels like the knife is going to come out of my hand. I am not a fan of front flippers, chop flippers. I don't like them. If you're going to do it, put a thumb stud on it. So this knife definitely, definitely needed a thumb stud. Um, you could have done it easily. Uh, it's got ample spot for a thumb stud right there. I, I was going to get a set of those thumb studs that Cole uses and screw it on and just have them here. But, you know, I, I, I did not make very much money on YouTube last month. So that, because I was in the hospital and stuff, so that precludes that. I'm still going to probably get a set of those. Um, a couple of other small things. Um, while it is, it is comfortable in hand and in pocket, this does have a tendency to in your pocket when you bend down, depending on if you've got it 
um, I was carrying this a little bit more forward because I was carrying two knives at a time. So I had one knife back towards the insteam, and then I had this knife up towards the zipper. It's not that it digs into your waist, but when you bend down, that will dig into your leg if you happen to sit down just right and catch it. That definitely does catch on things and, and hit you in the leg. It's not super uncomfortable because it's not super sharp, but you are definitely aware of it. Um, the other thing, I, I have to say it, this pocket clip, while that pocket clip is comfortable in hand, it is one of the most comfortable pocket clips I've had on a knife lately. Pulling it out of pocket, not a problem. Getting it in your pocket is a nightmare. This literally, I almost, I have a, a, I have lost some weight because, well, with the new diet and I can't, and I qu had to quit drinking, I've lost some weight. And so I have a couple pairs of pants that are not, you know, they're kind of loose. And this actually required enough force to put it in pocket that I pulled my pants, I almost pulled my pants down. Um, so if you're public, not being, now coming out of pocket, not an issue, but trying to get that material up under this fairly stiff pocket clip with that very, very strong, um, angle there, this needed to be, this needed to be tapered instead of hollowed. You could have gotten away with a lot. You could have gotten away with this much tension if that was a, a V taper to push the material down instead of it binding up there. If you did a V, it would have pushed that up. Definitely an issue. And then another final issue I really have with the knife is this is close enough that it actually can bind up material. Um, I'm not a fan of the lock bar, uh, the, the lock bar cut out here for the spring uh, where, it, where it's cut in uh, to allow you the spring tension for your detent. I'm not of a fan of it on the outside. If you are going to do it on the outside, I would prefer that they would definitely chamfer this out way more. Let me let me show you. See how I know I know I'm going back to Norseman. See how much softer the edges are on that. This does not catch anything, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This pocket clip is not anywhere near as hollowed out or abrupt as this one. They're very similar on how they do that um, that cutout, but that this one is much more abrupt and. And it, it's like trying to push it over. It, it's almost like it's square. So that's the two things. There are no other real bad things about it. Overall, it's a really good knife. I would probably, I would probably, if it was me, I would probably just take this pocket clip off and see if I could maybe soften that up somehow, change the angle on it a little bit, maybe take some of the tension off of it. I think the big problem is that there's a lot of tension on this. Um, but overall, everything else, but other those two things, thumb studs would have made it a lot better. Pocket clip, pocket clip, the, if you had done that pocket clip a little bit differently, I feel that it would have been so much better in and out of pocket. This, I can get by with this as long as it doesn't bind up. It doesn't bind up too badly. So everything else on it is really good. And like I said, other companies have started doing this. There's a lot of companies that are doing this. Now, I am such a fan of this method of lanyard lanyard hole placement, a little post inside the, inside the uh, backspacer so that you can still put it in, put a lanyard in, and you don't have to worry about it getting cut, but you're also not putting a big nasty hole in the knife itself. So there you go, guys. The Cancept Accipiter, pretty good all around knife, just a couple little things. Like I said, if it had a thumb stud, if it had thumb stud, this probably would have been eight or nine out of 10 uh, on my, on my thing. But yeah, Four out of five stars, I guess. Four out of five stars would recommend. Uh, like I said, just be be cognizant of this pocket clip. This pocket clip in and out of uh, like track pants and shorts, no problem. Jeans, a little bit thicker, it was a problem. 5.11s, not happening. 5.11 jeans, 5.11 pants have a reinforced pocket seam for, for stuff, for pocket clips on knives so it doesn't eat up your pockets. And it just would not go over it. So there you go, guys. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts. So there you go, guys. The Cancept Accipiter. I, I do like this. I just wish that they resolve a couple little issues. Like I said, needs thumb studs, change the pocket clip a little bit. So guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't tell me what you don't like, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. I love it when you guys do that. 
If you do hit the bell icon, however, make sure you've got notifications turned on on your device. You will not get notified of the pretty much three things that go up Monday through Friday. If you want to support the channel financially, however, there's a handful of ways you can do it. Down below, like I said in the middle of the video, I have a ton of affiliate links. Anything you purchase with those affiliate links supports the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. There are a bunch of different ones down there. I have a lot of stuff pre-picked where it's tools, stones, knives, um, EDC items. I also have Blade HQ, Coffee Brand Coffee, VPN, a bunch of stuff down there. Uh, SOG knives, any of those things support the channel. Um, I have a membership as well that's listed down below if you're on a computer. You can join my membership, which is tier-based. Everyone saves $5 off my sharpening service. Everyone has access to my Gilded server, but there are tiered benefits. Baseline and premium tier members are entered into giveaways automatically that I do off, off of YouTube and then announce the, uh, the winner on Gilded. And then I also have a premium tar sharpening tutorial series for the premium members. Uh, and the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. Anything you purchase on Ember Shirt Co., I can save you 10% at checkout. With the coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, all one word, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.